What's up guys, Hiking here, bringing you another manga review on this week's Boku no Hero, chapter 347. So, last week we left off with, uh, you know, most of our main heroes fighting off uh, Shigaraki and him pretty much owning all of them. As he exposed his big massive flesh of fingers and hands or whatever it is. So, yeah, we start with this chapter where we left off literally with that, that overwhelming force just attacking them and then wondering what the hell this is, what kind of quirk this is, you know, quirk, if you will. And Monoma, he's trying to use a racist quirk to stop this, and but, you know, it's it's not working, and, and, he's, and he's even telling them, I'm looking right at him, a ratio is properly activated, what? And the realization that, oh, what's happening right now from Shigaraki is not a quirk attack, it's not a quirk ability, no. And Shigaraki confirms this, this is just growth, nothing but flesh. Just like the hairs on your head or the nails on your hands grow, a quirk will evolve and so the body must adapt to it, giving birth to a new form. This is the peak of supernatural society, Dr. Garaki's so-called quirk singularity. So. And yeah, we get this big massive spread of Shigaraki and just all these fingers growing, amassing, like, it's it's disgusting. Like, it really reminds me of Akira here. Heroes have been turning their backs to this reality, trying to suppress the true future of humanity. So oblivious. So, the realization that this is just a natural growth is pretty grotesque because it, it makes me question certain things now. Like, this is what will happen to most heroes who, what? If their quirks evolve in the future, they turn into freaking monsters like this? Or is this just because of Shigaraki and his cons consumption of so many different quirks and, and, and him powering himself up that this is what it's evolved to? Like, like this is what this is what his body has to go through in order to contain all of these different abilities and quirks. But I'm pretty sure all of those quirks were taken out by uh, Stars and Stripes, right? So he's only got uh, access to his Decay ability. But this quirk right now that he's using it's pretty much very dangerous because because it's just fingers and hands essentially and because it's growing so big it's touching everything if if he gets access to his decay ability if monomar decides to look away for even one second this dude can just kill literally everyone right now right there so very dangerous we get this panel of merkel just you know like we ended the last chapter we thought she would we die but no you have to keep in mind monomar is the only one you know phantom thief is <laughs> phantom thief his hero name is phantom thief <laughs> I'm getting reminded of a uh, Persona here, <laughs> which which came out first, Persona or Boku no Hero. But yeah, uh, we, we we saw her get hit last chapter at the end, and you know I, I assumed, oh god, she's gonna die. But no, the the decay has not been activated, so she's fine for the most part. The only thing that's happened is that she gets her prosthetics uh, ripped out, her arm and leg prosthetic, and uh, as she's sliding on the ground, very sexy shot here. You know, you know, for any, for those of you who are into amputees, you know, pretty sexy, you know. Well, well done, even as an amputee like uh, uh, Horogashi just making her look like, damn, that, that, those are some thick legs, like, mmm, mmm, oh, I wanna, I just wanna, ah, oh. I need, I need to get myself, a, I need to get myself a woman, definitely, definitely, it's, 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 it's becoming sad now, <laughs> the sipping is becoming sad for me, but yeah, she's sliding on the ground and she's like, spare, and we get this very uh, Tony Stark moment where uh, the floor opens up and basically spare prosthetics fly out like I like an Iron Man suit and they attach themselves to her so she gets back into the fight and she's calling out to Bakugo's hero name, you know, Dynamite like that they need to fend him off and regroup until they can regroup and he's just like, yo, it's it's great explosion murder in god Dynamite and... and <laughs> So this guy is determined to call himself that. He's like, no, no, that's not your full name. Dynamite is your name. That's your hero name. That's what we're going to stick with. We're not going to go through that whole long-ass great explosion murder. No, no, no. Just like, no, it's not happening. Just just, just stop trying to make that work. Like, it's not happening. And you've got Genus up on a platform telling them both of them to focus. And it's like, uh, you know, what, what, what we got to do is obvious. And it's like, obvious? What's obvious? And we cut to Momonama and Ao Aoizawa. And it's like... You know, Sensei, I'm doing it just like you taught me. This can't be my fault. And I was always reassuring. It's like, no, it's not. It's not your fault, dude. Like, nothing you can really do. And e even him realizing that those hands, though, the danger of those hands, 
and uh, we get one of the other heroes, like Eraser, I've gotten into contact with Midoriya Kun, and we cut to Midoriya talking to him, saying, telling him what specifically happened with Tolga grabbing him and pulling him away from the fight. And he's basically telling him to warp him in. But, uh, you know, Aoizawa, you know, you know, you know, you've got the heroes like, you know, Shai, you know, we need to warp, warp Midoriya back here. And one of the other heroes say, but I'm afraid we can't. And there's that realization, that big, massive, Condandrum basically that they can't do this because of the fact that if they want to warp Midoriya to them, Monomar has to basically stop using Eraser's quirk, which is the quirk that's essentially keeping Shigaraki contained in this battle arena, is keeping them all alive from stopping him using his decay. The moment he switches that off, and they need at least 10 seconds for him to switch that off. And use the, the, the you know the, the the Kurugiri ability to warp Midoriya back. In those ten seconds, you know they will lose essentially. So if they do that, they're done for. Especially because because of this unexpectedness of the hands of these giant hands just growing on. And we get this panel. We get this panel of the hands overtaking the arena. Like it's literally touching floor, ground, rooftop, ceiling, buildings. That happens. They're gone. They're done. They're finished. So they can't. So he basically pretty much tells Midoriya that he has to get back himself. And until then, you know, it's up to it's up to Genist, Dynamite, Mirko, uh, the other heroes that are there to take care of him. You know, and Genus says it best, who cares if we don't have one for all? I say we beat him right here and now. Yeah, you're right, yeah, and they're ganging up, teaming up to do this. And yeah, these guys are going to get their asses kicked. I think I think by the end of this fight that we're having, it's only going to be Bakugo that's going to be standing. Because I do think we're going to get this moment that we got from the uh, the second movie. Uh, I think I think was it Heroes Rising or was it Two Heroes? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ugh. Right, Heroes. Is it Heroes Rising? Was it Heroes Rising? I could be wrong. It was Heroes Rising, wasn't it? Right? It was this one, wasn't it? The first one, the first one's called something else, but this was it. And at the end of this, uh, Bakugo and Midoriya, they share, they share uh, one for all, the quirk between them, and they, they take on the bad guys. So I'm thinking something similar is going to happen where Bakugo, you know, he's going to be hanging on by a thread, and Midoriya's going to arrive, and the two of them are going to team up, and the only way they're going to be able to beat this guy is that they share the quirk together. So I think that's what's going to happen here, similar to what happened in that movie. Because you have to remember, Horogoshi said that a lot of the ideas he had with this film was ideas that he wanted to implement into the uh, final battle arc with Boku no Hero in the manga. So I'm assuming that's going to somehow come back. But yeah, we cut to Okto Island, uh, which is approximately 200 kilometers off the Pacific coast. Pacific coast, so where exactly is this? How far is that from Japan? How far is that from where they are? Um, and we basically cut to what is essentially, uh, you know, Kuga Sakumata, also known as Gang Orca. This is his aquarium. So the fight that's taking place between the Numos and, and Toga is taking place in this aquarium. And we see, like, just, just the splashes of water. We see these Numos. Whatever this is, like, we've got one Numo with its brains open up like a mouth, like, coming out, like, and yeah, it's just, it's shady. You've got the heroes fighting, trying to keep this thing contained. And then we we, we, we you know we see a moment of Froppy here, and she's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of the heroes asking if she's okay, but she's like, yeah, but uh, De Deku and Uraviti, uh, uh, Gravity, Uraviti, Uraviti, you know, they, they got knocked about by the by, by the splashes and the and the and the shock waves from this fire. And uh, you know, uh, you know, Orochan is asking Deku, you know, you know what I, I was our sensei told him, and he's like, you know, he has to go on his own, he has to get to to the fight by himself. And then he gets attacked from behind by Toka. You know, she's coming for him. And his danger sense is not even going off. His danger sense is not activating. And he has to dodge this. And she's like, you know, don't go, Deku I love you, so please don't go. Like, freaky, crazy, crazy lunatic, man. Like, yon like is that what you call a yondera, right? Like, in Japanese terms, like, uh, yon yondera, uh, a yonder a yonderu <laughs> or something. And, you know, Yuriti is getting pushed back by the waves and Deku has to defend himself from her and he's like, you know, and, he, and he's just complimenting, he's trying to understand why the danger sense won't go off and we cut to 
we cut to the hero whose quirk that belongs to, I think, uh, and, 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 and we get his thoughts, and she's like, she likes him so much that the threat is not registering as danger. Knowing there's more people like her out there makes me feel lucky to have lived to this day. Which is a weird thing for him to say. What does that mean? Why why is he lucky to have lived to this day? Like why like why is he happy that there's people like that? What does this mean? Is this a good thing perhaps? I mean this would be very bad. And Deku's just like, what do you want from me? And when we get this final, we just get this panel, this final panel. Sorry guys, my uh, uh, camera uh, battery ran ran out and I just replaced it. But yeah, we. Continuing on with the uh, review, we cut to Togo, we cut to this final panel, looking all cute and girly. She is cute, you know, I, I like Togo, I like her character, but she is a psycho, like, she really is crazy, and she says, her reply is basically, I want you to be my boyfriend, and we get this shocked look from her, uh, you know, UBT, the skills love, and, and Deku, like, like, and we end with this, the skills love is so intense, it puts people in danger. So we get the realization, this revelation, that she likes Deku to the point that when she tries to attack him, his danger sense won't go up because it can't register a person whose love is so great or so obsessive that that it that it won't think of it as danger. Basically, like it's crazy to think that that that, that you can counter it like that. Like imagine, like like so basically, basically, if anyone likes Deku, like really really likes him, loves him, they could just come and just stab him in the back, like. What? So yeah, um, it's crazy. It's it's crazy to think that that that's how she can counter his 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 danger sense. Like that's kind of very worrying because that means at any point, if she wanted to during that time period when 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 he had that ability, she could just walk up to him and just start stabbing him, biting him, eating him. Like, but like, what does this mean? She wants him to be his boyfriend. Like, she's trying to kill him, but she she wants him to be his boyfriend. Like, it's just. I, which is it? Like, if you want him to be your boyfriend, why are you attacking him? Why are you? I guess she tried to stop him from leaving. I guess, but still, like, and yeah, like Deku just sees this as very scary. Like, I think he realizes how obsessed and insane she is. And with Yurity, I don't know. Maybe this this realization, like, like, oh, is this what it's about? Or I'm thinking next chapter. Obviously, like, we're gonna finally get this confession. We're gonna get this confession from uh, Ochanku. Uh, where she's gonna reveal her feelings for Deku, where she's finally gonna admit that I love you, I want you to be my boyfriend, and Deku's gonna acknowledge that and accept her love instead of Toga's. And you know, this is either gonna end with Toga being happy for the both of them that they're acknowledging themselves, or she's gonna get very pissed and angry fast, and she's gonna unleash a twice as quirk, you know. Uh, was it sad, sad parade, panda, sad panda parade, or something? Whatever it was called, maybe like, because this is unpredictable territory at this point. Toga is unpredictable. You you don't know what she's gonna do next, and it's terrifying. Like it really is. It's it's scary as hell. And yeah, this is this is a fight that at least with her, this is in a very important fight with her that needs to to be ended quickly as possible because un until they can until they beat her. Deku isn't going anywhere, so he's stuck there. And it's nice that we're getting this confrontation, uh, you know, pretty much between Deku and Yubiti and Toga because you know those are the two people that she's very obsessed and focused on. So to get that, to get this confrontation between the three of them, is a good way of progressing and maybe concluding the arcs together. But yeah, at this point, it's like, what's going to happen next, right? So I do think we're in for a confession i really do i think this is it this is going to be the point where you know love love saves all basically and then of course the big the big thing comes to how is deku gonna get back you know how is deku gonna get back to 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 you know to the hero academy i mean they're in the flowing fortress at this point so maybe maybe whoever's controlling that can try and fly it towards or near to deku so he can get there like can he even fly? Someone's gonna have to fly him out though, he's gonna have to swim, like... So many ins and outs about this, like... How is this gonna work? And then of course, Yubiti. She can float, right? So maybe if they deal with Toga fast enough, it, it can end with Yubiti flying Deku, you know, using her gravity powers to fly him there, and it's them two heading there. Or maybe someone else is gonna come in and help them out. I don't know, like, but because... 
How is he gonna get off that island, right? That's the thing. It's it's either he's either gonna be flying, swimming, or taking a boat. Like it's one or the other. But yeah, this uh, as 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 the chapter ends, it does say emotions running high. It only escalates in the next chapter. So yeah, uh, it looks like we're gonna continue on with next with this confrontation next chapter, and I can't. For one, can't wait to see how it's gonna go because, yeah, yikes, that's what it is, yikes. But yeah, very good chapter, can't wait for next week. And yeah, guys, as always, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, and as always, guys, as always, I say this, I'm trying to say it very slowly so we can get through it. Yeah, <laughs> I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.